Aloha and welcome to Cooper Union Broadcasting Live in downtown Honolulu in Moana, Nui Akea. Today, we'll be looking at the UN General Assembly attracting all advocates, democracy defenders lining up for liberty. The United Nations General Assembly opening week attracts heads of state and foreign ministers to share values and visions for a better world. And the UNGA features activities and actions by civil society and countries seeking solutions. At the 77th session, the Super Bowl of Social Justice allows for people to participate from around the globe at the UN headquarters and in major venues across New York City. All issues and initiatives contribute to the global chorus for social change. Today, I'm joined by two activists who came together featuring important issues from Europe and Asia to look at what must be done to make the world a better place. Activists, advocates, and artists gather together at the UN General Assembly to shape the world agenda. And these two are very much involved to contribute to this global chorus for social change. I'd like to welcome Bunton Chantalavon Visa and Marcus Visa. Thank you so much for joining us today. Bunton, what was one of, why does Alliance for Democracy in Laos come to the UN General Assembly and what has been important so far in your history in New York? Hi, Joshua. Uh, we are uh, from Alliance for Democracy in Laos. We were in uh, New York City uh, by UN General Assembly. Why? Uh, we are an uh, uh, independent NGO from Laos. Uh, we are a network um, clever organization for human rights and democracy. Uh, defender for Laos. Uh, we have um, our event to um, inform in the world about situation in Laos, real situation like um, human rights violation in Laos, land rights problem in Laos, and so on. This problem we tell uh, for the people to know how is really the problem in our country. But the um, Lao government, they don't tell the reality in, Lao, in our country. As NGO, they can work with another independent NGO, international NGO together to tell every problem in our country what the people don't have um, right for um, protection, the human right, and protection, their right of land, protection, the right of the country. Thank you, Bunton. And Marcus, what have you seen so far in participating at the UN General Assembly for a couple of years now? And what were some of the highlights of uh, this week? Yeah, now we work for uh, some more years uh, at the United Nations uh, bodies. One of them is the UN General Assembly. And uh, we also work on uh, other levels at the uh, United Nations bodies. For an example, we work for Southeast Asia, especially for the Laos People's Republic. So there is one UN body at in Bangkok and another one very important is uh, in Geneva. There are the human rights bodies, but the most important is, yeah, as mentioned before, is the UN General Assembly. This is a place where NGOs came together in this year, virtual and in person. It was both. The virtual has started last year uh, during the Corona crisis. Uh, it's uh, one possibility for people uh, to come together, but it is better to meet in person. We met them, for example, at the high level dialogue and launch out of the Shadow Index 2022, or at the Monkeypox outbreak uh, venue, or DevEx 20, uh, DevEx 777, SDG Action Zone has been, and many, many more. It is very important to come there, meeting the people in person, sharing ideas. It is not only to speak about problems in the area, it is speaking about results of our researches and looking together for solution. At this year, 
the main theme was climate change got very, very good that climate change is in the focus of the several CSOs and NGOs. We know we have a big problem this year with the Ukraine war and most of the governments are only looking on this problem and we are here that they don't lose the view on the problem of climate change, <coughs> of problems of poverty, of the problems of human rights issues. That is very important. And therefore it is very good to building new networks between CSOs and NGOs and the various sessions and, and the various events at the United, round about on the United Nations. Many, many, venues has taken place this year and this is really good yeah we thought in the last years during the corona crisis oh god where where will it move where where it uh, can happen in the future but god heavens we have managed the crisis we are back and we are here and we speak about problems we speak about solutions and some highlights has been for an example the rally for the climate crisis sponsored by uh, fridays for future on last friday and uh, the last point has been the concert it was very great to hear president biden's speech and from the other politicians it was very very good to hear that they hear our voice that they recognize that we are here and it's so important to come back Thank you, Marcus, for sharing highlights of everything that's been happening and what is going on. Really, it's exciting to see the UN General Assembly has actually grown into like a late summer version of Davos in the city that never sleeps. We see people coming to the Big Apple to take a bite out of it, to be able to share their voices. And Buntan, it's exciting to hear that you're bringing the voice of the people of Laos, which isn't usually on the global stage, and to make sure that maybe, let's say, the little mango of Laos is there at the Big Apple and that the people hear about what's important and what's going on in Laos. What's also significant, building on what Marcus has shared, is how many things happen. It's really moved beyond the heads of state and foreign minister's speeches to really the space where ideas are interrogated, where initiatives are born, and where people come together to create new campaigns to make the world a better place. Some of those examples are the Goals House, where they turn the Tavern on the Green into a meeting place for all of humanity to come and share. Another was the fourth Goalkeepers event by the Gates Foundation that was also important. And then the Clinton Global Initiative happened for the first time since 2016. What's significant about all of these is how people come and make commitments and then organize activities afterwards Punton, looking at what happened last week, what would you say was the highlights? Marcus shared about the index that happened there right at the church center across from the UN General Assembly that we attended on Tuesday. But what were some of the highlights for you? Would it be the DEVIX program that took place or a couple of the other major conferences where you were able to go and speak and meet with people from around the world who share common passions for a, to protect our planet. What were some of your highlights of where you attended and how you participated? Um, I think um, um, it, uh, every event uh, gives us a new idea to make something in our country, exclusively uh, to a protection environment in our country. A new idea, we must start it. Um, Immediately now, example, uh, we need a new project uh, against plastic in our country. Uh, we need project new project for reforestation in our country, and on so on. It's very good even in the in the New York City for us to know uh, how can we have. Uh, some um, project in our country, you know. Um, the people in Laos, they don't know how can we have even um, uh, projects. Why the government didn't tell uh, 
they, they don't give the right for the pupil. The pupil don't have independence to organize something. And the environment uh, in Laos is very, dis uh, is too much destruction. The pupil must learn about new project, about new um, um, <clears throat> as a method to make something to protect the environment and to um, uh, sustainable to um, some project. Thank you so much, Buntan. And that's absolutely important. It's going there as a space where we get new ideas and you're able to bring some of those ideas back home to then share what's possible and to transform our own communities based on these ideas that are shared at Global Civil Society. What's really important as we go forward and look is maybe some of the ideas, Marcos, we could talk about what we looked at, such as the evening event that was focusing on climate change, climate finance, disruption in you. It was exciting to see the architecture taking a central role to be able to share how we can design the cities of the future that actually are based on biomimicry, that are based on nature, based solutions, and also the important parts they shared about indigenous people's roles as protecting the planet. Maybe you could share about that event and how that was really an innovation of what we could do to change our nations to be better places for humanity to live going forward. Yeah, that is uh, what we learned from uh, various uh, events. Uh, for an example, at the Nest Summit Campus and uh, at the DevEx UNGA 77, it was a uh, year near the uh, United Nations, round on um, uh, United Nations. We learned, now it is time to act. We have spoken such a lot. We have discussed such a lot. And now we have the knowledges, we know everything. We have the resources, we have the money and there is no excuse not to transform our world economy for the better future, for a 100% zero CO2 emission, for a better politics for climate change. There's no excuse. We got models from various states. For an example, we have met with the Prime Minister of uh, Tonga. It was amazing. It was so wonderful. Or uh, I've uh, met with the founder of uh, the Blue Planet Alliance, and he spoke about solutions. And he says it is possible that we can reach the aims much earlier than the United Nations has mentioned before not in 2050, not in 2045. Uh, no, we can reach the aim in 2025 in some states. And this is what we can see at a, as a model for other states. We are the CSOs, we are the voice of the people, and we can bring it to governments and people and learn and teach people and learning from each other. Thank you, Marcus. And then that highlights one of the most important points that was addressed. Last year was a food summit, which was very important, focusing on food sovereignty and transforming our food systems. But this year, it was the United Nations Transforming Education Summit. And education, of course, is the foundation for the UN Sustainable Development Goals and for making the positive social change. Also, I know you shared at the seventh annual UN SDGs and Global Human Rights Conference that takes place that you were able to share a bit about education, Buntun, in Laos and why we must focus on education going forward to improve Laos and to improve Southeast Asia. Can you share a bit about education being the essence for empowerment and engagement for future generations and why it's so important? Um, yes, um, it, even about education is very important for the future. Why in Laos, um, uh, the education is very bad. The government don't have interesting for better education. Uh, too much teacher they don't have. Uh, they don't have pay. Uh, around um, nine thousand teacher they don't have pay. They um, they must go to another uh, job. This is very bad for our country for the young people. Um, Education system allows too much uh, corruption. Uh, the young people, they don't have future. 
Uh, another one, the young people that have problem with drugs, like methamphetamine. The government don't have interest in against drug problem. I am very happy to be in uh, New York City uh, by uh, even for education, and I have uh, I took some um, political about our country. Uh, we need uh, better for education for the young people immediately. And we need to change the system in Laos to better education. Thank you, Boton. Marcus, could you share a bit about the Transforming Education Summit and why education is so important going forward? And this was really addressed by some heads of state as well, because if we don't have education, we can't really make any of the changes you've been talking about but also we have to educate about democracy and how valuable it is going forward. And this was stressed by many heads of state. Yeah, that, uh, that's uh, the result of all the discussions of the various uh, events. Uh, education is the solution for most of the problems. It is real, the solution. It is the solution for ending poverty. It is the solution for making better politics for climate change. It is making solutions for more democracy and human rights it is a solution and people have the knowledge people knows what to do it is not the question if it is possible it is the question of the will some governments will and some governments will and this is the difference and this is what we say here clear and open we want if the governments open their mind and see that it's better for themselves and it is better for their land and it's better for the people, get them the education. It is not the problem. It can't be the problem of the financing of this education system in the country. Finances are there. Funds are there. Help is there. Help by the United Nations, by CSOs, whatever. Yeah, It is possible and it is a solution on most of all our problems we have in this world. Thank you, Marcos. And it also reinforces what President Biden said when he addressed the UNGA. He talked about the UN, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights is the standard by which our forebears challenge us to measure ourselves. Talking about when this was adopted in 1948, human rights are the basis for all that we seek to achieve. But he also pointed out in 2022, fundamental freedoms are at risk in every part of the world. And that's one of the reasons why, of course, you come to be able to share about what's going on in Southeast Asia. He also did stand up with the brave people in Iran who are now demonstrating to secure their basic rights. And he made one point, the future will be won by those countries that unleash the full potential of their population where women and girls can exercise equal rights including basic reproductive rights that contribute fully to building stronger economies and more resilient societies. So what's important is the U.S. did commit, as he said, the U.S. will always promote human rights and values enshrined in the U.N. Charter in our own country and around the world. And he did end this. This institution, guiding by the U.N. Charter and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, is at its core an act of dauntless hope. An act of dauntless hope. So, Bunton, I know you have hope, but I know you also heard the words of our good friend, Hank Rogers from Blue Planet Alliance. You also have determination. What do you feel you accomplished this year and why was it so important to be at the 77th annual UNGA opening week? Uh, I am very happy to be at um, UNGA um, 77. Uh, I have heard for, um, speak from uh, President Joe Biden. Uh, about um, human rights protection. Every member of the UN must be implemented the Human Rights uh, Convention. Uh, this is uh, for Laos is very important. The Lao government did not um, Im uh, implement the Human Rights uh, Convention from UN. But now I see does uh, the Lao government they must um, implement it immediately. Uh, and I'm very happy to hear about uh, protection of human rights and for democracy, global democracy. 
is a new word for uh, 2022 for me and for the world. I think uh, we need global democracy. Why? Um, 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 the war in Ukraine from Russia is um, the war uh, from dictature. The dictatorship must be ended in the world. We must change the world for global democracy immediately, I think. Thank you, Bunton. And, and that does stress the point of what was really shared was Ukraine was at the center, as Bunton shared, and it was a time for the world to stand up to say that we must all support those fundamental freedoms enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and stand up against authoritarian regimes that are threatening the peace and security, not only of their neighbors, but the whole planet. Marcus, why was that so significant this time? And why is it important for the voice of the people of Laos to be heard to also then challenge the situation such as in Iran? and others because they're not allowed to exercise their voice? And why is it so crucial for you to use your human rights to be the voice for others who can't exercise those rights? People in Laos and around the world have to know that the human rights declaration of the United Nations is the standard, it's the standard of the world. And every country who is a member of the United Nations has accepted, has signed it, and has to undermine under this rule. We have more human rights declaration, for an example, at the European Union, at the Asian states and some national issues, but they are all based on the fundamental UN human rights basics, what's standing there in the human rights declaration. So your country has accepted, so your country has to make it. There is no excuse. They have accepted. And this is what the people have to stand for. And President Biden has remembered us that the free nations has come together and fight for this freedom. And remember all the authoritarian states that they have to act like the human rights standards of the United Nations. The former Italian re representative at the United Nations has said it very clear. There is no perfect country in the world. We are not, you are not. But there is one difference. In some countries, you can say it. And in other countries, it is not possible to say it. That's the main difference. And I recognize that some ambassadors from the authoritarian states get some fun and want to hide their face and don't want to hear it. But this is the truth. And the authoritarian government, they don't want to recognize this. They don't want to hear this. That is a shame for them when they hear that something went wrong in their countries. The free countries, the democratic countries, no problem. We can speak open about it. And we know what we have to do better. So stand up for your rights. Democracy and freedom is possible and it will come slowly but truly. It will come when you want. Thank you, Marcus. And it also reminds me, looking at both of your comments, I remember the quote that was delivered at the Global Citizen Concert Festival on Saturday night in Central Park that democracy protects the planet. That was made by the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. It also reminds me of, in our closing moments, there's a couple of a side events, and those are more of events that happen in the evening, but are also significant. There was the Island Resilience Forum at the SDG Lounge that happened a meeting with Tonga that uh, Marcus shared a little bit but also the climate impact talks that took place at the Hard Rock Hotel. And of course, the Saturday event of the Global Citizen, which is really a global teach-in where there's music with Metallica and Manskin and Mariah Carey, Jonas Brothers, Cake at the Ocean and everything. But there's also amazing speeches in between. Buntan, what were some of the highlights of those Article 24 events, be it the SDG Lounge or the event at the Hard Rock Hotel? learning about the Peace Boat mission and the youth or the Global Citizen Council. What were some of those highlights where you could see the education was still going on and people were networking to make a difference at the United Nations, but also at home? I think um, every event in Laos, um, the, po the pupil, they come together and tell about, um, uh, is it possible 
in a uh, rich country to take um, human rights and environment protection. And it's possible for uh, all CO2 in the world. By now, I see that some land uh, like Tong, they have the plan in future. My dream is in my country in Laos. We need to immediately to turn our country to protect the human rights and to protect the environment. And we need immediately to turn the system uh, to protect uh, the human rights on to read sustainable, life sustainable goals, 17 sustainable goals. We need in our country in Laos immediately. No, it's a really good point because of course in 2015, the UN Global Goals were adopted at the UN General Assembly. And it's exciting to see how people are mobilizing to manifest these global goals on the ground. Marcus, in our final minute, what were some of the highlights from you, either the SDG Lounge with Tonga or the important Hard Rock Hotel event with Blue Planet Alliance or the Global Citizen Concert? What was some of the highlights for you and how did that really end your amazing week at UNGA for the 77th session? For me, it was so amazing to be there and it is the right city, it is New York City. People from around the globe came together from every color, from every religion, from every part of the world, from every ethnic group that came together and they want to build a better world for everybody, not, not for themselves alone, for everybody. So this is so great and it was so wonderful. And at the end of all the events, that's a global citizen, festival so many different people has come together people with proper clothes people with leather jackets with long hair with short hair black people white people muslim people jewish people has spoken with me <laughs> by the way and, and buddhist people and they came together and they celebrated and they were has been so happy so fantastic and then the speech of President Biden, it was so wonderful, together with his wife. He was there and he said, let's enjoy it. Open up your mind, stay together, fight for freedom, and we will have it the better future when we make it together. It was so amazing. And that was the result of the three events you've mentioned before. It was so wonderful. Thank you, Marcus. Me. And that really does conclude with the message of we should free our mind and keep up the spirit of the UN General Assembly, not just for one week, but throughout the year. And we're so glad you're able to bring the voice of Laos to this important global gathering. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.